Welcome back to Really Gun Adventures. Well, um, this has to be the best looking Chinese air gun I've ever seen. It's the SMK XS41, um, which is the replacement for the B40. Um, you can see why it's such a good looking gun. It's very like the Air Arms TX200. Now, the B40 was just like the Air Arms. TX200 and that's really some of the issue with it. It did ruffle a few feathers. This one um, is certainly inspired by the Air Arms, um, but it's not a direct copy as such. Now, um, it is a very good looking gun. Um, they seem to be quite thin on the ground and quite rare. And I don't know why for sure. Um, there are a few theories about that. There's quite a backstory to these rifles. I don't want to get into all that. I want to look at this for what it is. Um, a standalone air rifle and um, see how good or, or not so good it might be. So it's in the beach stock, which is beautifully shaped. Um, the finish on this stock is really nice. The, the lack of finish is as good as anything that you'll see. The timber itself, solid beach, is a nice cut of beach with some nice figuring. Now the action, the bluing on the action, is very, very good. I would say it's probably close to the Virat quality. It's not up to the air arm standard um, or Walther, but it's really, really good. And for a Chinese budget priced rifle, it's exceptional. So starting at the business end, um, got a plastic um, muzzle combined with um, a locking system which is a slide type locking system so you drop down the cocking lever so and pop it back so it's quite positive it's a nice firm system um i prefer it to the lgu actually but that's a, another story um coming back along you've got the sliding breech it's around about 60 percent sliding breech very similar to air arms um well machined you can see there's three grooves on there and those grooves make up the buck off system which is the bear trap or the anti-bear trap it has a really nice release which is very substantial easy to operate well machined scope rail 9 to 11 mil dovetail scope rail and i've just popped on a, a spare scope which is a victor optics again it's a nine by three to nine by 40 pretty good scope Certainly good enough for the shooting that I'm going to do today. Um, auto safety, um, like the Air Arms, like the Virac, it's not resettable though. So once you've released the safety, it stays released until you fire the gun. Other than that, it's like everything else that you'll see. The trigger guard and the trigger are metal. It's a two stage adjustable trigger. It's um, very similar to the record trigger in appearance. It's the same trigger that SMK have on their XS20, which I think they've stopped importing now, but it was supposed to be um, a close assimilation of the, of the record trigger. I've fired the gun a few times. Um, I can tell you now that it's, it doesn't behave like a record trigger, but it is a very good trigger. And the adjustment means you can get the thing to suit your needs. It's not as crisp as a lot of the better triggers. Um, it's predictable and um, it does what it's supposed to do. So I'm not gonna pull it down on the trigger. Um, it's certainly head and shoulders above uh, a lot of the Chinese air rifles at around the 150 pound mark. The retail price on this is 189, I think. Um, there or thereabouts. So this is not an expensive rifle. Um, it's fairly weighty and we'll go through the specifications a bit later on. I'll give you the barrel length, the overall length and, and the weight. But I just want you to see how good looking this rifle is. I'm going to pick it up for a sec. <coughs> just give it a little turn into the light. Now, I've got a different camera set up today. I thought we'd go overhead or semi overhead so you can see the gun in all its glory. Now the cheek piece on the stock is actually a double cheek piece. So it's ambidextrous. It's got a really, really nicely scalloped pistol grip, which is very comfortable to hold. Now, unlike the other rifles I've mentioned, um, 
There's no taper in the forestock. It's the same thickness all the way down, or very close to that. It is a substantial piece of wood. There's no denying that. Now, I would say, um, at first glance, and even a closer look, that this is comparable to rifles two, even three times the price, um, cosmetically. Certainly finish-wise, material-wise, it looks like everything else that's around. Um, it doesn't look like an SMK rifle. It doesn't look like a cheap Chinese air gun. And there are lots of those on the market now. Um, this one does stand out, both on looks and quality. Now I've cocked it and fired it. I've put it over the chrono, and also when I picked it up, um, Nick at the shop put it over the chrono there too. Um, he got 10.6. FPE um, with Bisley practice and I've used both um, Bisley Superfield and JSB and um, I'm knocking the door of 11 foot pounds so it's full power. Anyway let's have a closer look. What I'll do is I'll um, change the camera angle again we'll get in a bit closer and also we'll look at the weight cocks. In fact let's do that now because <sighs> I've got a good angle on this. So, as I say, you slide up the release, down comes the lever, there are three clicks. On the third click, the safety engages, the breach is now open. Now, actually, that is pretty damn good in there. That's often the finish in the breach that lets it down. Um, and there is, obviously that isn't the same quality as looking into a Viroc or a arms, but that is nothing like the quality of looking into, say, a DB5 or P3 or P4, it's completely different. It's almost as though it's been made by somebody else entirely. As you probably know, you can decock these underlevers um, simply by depressing the trigger and allowing a little bit of, let's just take the safety off, depress the trigger, slight return, press down the button and take the tension back off the spring and back in. Now that's pretty smooth, pretty quiet, and I can tell you now that when I shoot it, it's pretty smooth and it's pretty quiet. Now, um, let's get a closer look. Okay, starting down at the butt end, it has a thick ventilated rubber butt pad. There's that double cheek piece and that really nicely scalloped pistol grip. Auto safety just there. And the trigger. Now the trigger does look really really impressive and for a cheap Chinese rifle it certainly is you can see the gap there to get the screwdriver in and the uh, adjusting screws are just up underneath I probably won't be able to get a focus on that because of the angle no let's not worry about that back up the top you can see the bluing you can see the quality of the actual beach really really nice Coming to the barrel, it isn't a shrouded barrel, in case you were wondering. Barrel and cocking lever all the way along to the catch assembly at the end, which is uh, quite impressive, I think. You can see that blueing again. It is really good. It's not at all what you'd expect, or certainly what I was expecting on a rifle at this price. Now that is a good looking rifle. Just come back a little bit. There you go. Okay, let's have a little look at these specifications and then do some shooting. Okay, so um, specifications. It's a 0.177. Um, it's rated at somewhere just under 12 foot FPE. And say I'm knocking the door of 11 and it's early days yet, hasn't settled down. Overall, it's uh, 160 centimeters. The barrel makes up 330 millimeters or 33 centimeters of that. Um, weight rise, it comes in at just around the six and a half pound mark, unscoped. Um, obviously this particular scope hasn't got any real weight to add to the rifle. Um, I just can't get over how good a rifle this is for the money. Um, I was expecting it to be, well, pretty rough. 
I didn't think it would cock very smoothly. I didn't think the bear trap would be um, anywhere near as smooth and easy to use uh, as it is. Um, looking inside the breech, it's pretty well machined. There's, there's no real issues in there. I can't see anything waiting to go wrong. Um, it feels to me as though there's enough grease in there because that often isn't the case. I've decided not to take the action out, check it over and lubricate anything because I thought I'll give you the review straight from the box. So it's just as though you've gone to the shop, you bought the gun home and you fire it. So you're getting a sort of no frills, nuts and bolts, shooting review, um, a real world review, should we say. So anyway, I'm going to go and put some pellets into a target. I'm going to fire the JSBs because I think they were the better of the two that I've tried. And um, I'm going to see how that goes. So I'll be right back. So there you have it, that's 25 yards, JSB Diablos, that's a, a five pence group, all bar one, and that was me. Um, I do enjoy firing this gun, I do love springers, I just got carried away, and um, that's the result. But um, overall, I'm pleased, that's a good result. I'm sure if I try some different pellets, perhaps go out on a day where it's not quite so windy, um, I can improve on that, I can probably I can probably tighten that right up. But, um, you know, for a gun of this calibre, at this price, um, that's incredible, you know, that really is good. The only other one I've had that surprised me as much was the other SMK, which was the XS208, which was incredibly accurate. Um, and I think this one will be the same. Just need to play around and find the, um, the best pellets for it. But that was a good group, five pence group for 25 yards with a pretty cheap scope, can't complain. Anyway, I think that's a really good gun. I think it's one of the best rifles around for that kind of money, and certainly for maybe twice as much money. Um, I think um, I think I might do a little shoot off with one of the uh, better known brands in the near future and see how that works out. But that's another day, another video. So for now, it's a big thank you for everyone who's liked and subscribed. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. I'll see you all again soon, and um, I'll give you all a heads up. Um, I might see if I can get my hands on a TX200 for the day. Anyway, that's enough for now. See you soon.